what well, everybody knows me already, Esther Montelder, and hopefully the recipes that I'm going to teach you are uh, very easy and also very tasty, and uh, hopefully you will enjoy as much as we do. So the first one is going to be the soup, and everyone has a recipe, right? Can you all hear me well? Yep. Yep. Okay. So uh, I started already uh, sauteing the onions and um, let me just put my stove up. And as you can see here, the onions are quite uh, golden. And I put already the onion that I minced very small little pieces. And then I added the garlic, I sauteed the garlic in here too, but I'm going to add more garlic so that you guys see the process as we go. Uh, but I'm going to wait. So, you want to oh. add the garlic. And here I have the amount of one and a half cup of onion. You can use any onion you want, you want except red. And the reason why is uh, red doesn't have as much flavor, it's more used for sauces, for salad. And, but for the soup, uh, either the yellow onion are great, uh, sweet onion also could do. Uh, definitely if you mix leeks with onion, it's even better because the leeks is, has a fragrance that is very elegant and very touching, it's, it's very nice. I didn't have leeks, so here we have only onions. And I added the garlic already. I'm going to wait a little because I want this to start uh, showing the bubble of the cooking. And in the meantime, I'm going to show you what I'm going to be putting in the soup. So after, normally it will take you around 15 minutes to 10 to 15 minutes to saute the onion. You want to uh, have them translucent. So you see that they are quite white and uh, but they had to be very well cooked. So put them in a slow um, heat and that way they will not uh, turn brown or anything. So then you add your garlic, saute the garlic, let the garlic for at least a minute because you want the garlic to bring those flavors up. And once the garlic starts, uh, you, you smell the garlic, then add the tomato. So it will take you between one to two minutes, okay? So the tomato, I get this from, Costco, but you can buy any diced tomatoes already diced, or you can buy the, the can of uh, tomatoes whole and then cut it yourself. Uh, I like to freeze it first because uh, they do on the shelf and you don't know what happened there. Uh, so maybe Luis, uh, oh, well, I can open. So we can, uh... <laughs> no, I, think can... I can never open those. <laughs> well, not with this finger also. So I'm just going to wait a tiny bit more. Uh, so now I'm seeing here the bubbles are happening on my uh, onion. Now the idea of the pot that you wanna use for the soup is whatever fix you, whatever you're going to be cooking. So you don't want a very, very large pot and have very little onion because of then all the onions on the sides are going to caramelize and brown much faster than the center one. So you want to really, uh, accommodate the amount of uh, onions or whatever you're going to be sauteing to the side of the pot. In this case, I did bring this uh, big, big one because I know I had enough onion to do it. And I wanna make the soup that you guys are going to see. So now I'm going to wait just one minute to add my tomato because I remember that I put some garlic in there. Um, so all together so it's like five garlic and a garlic should be the side of the garlic should be like a like a nice large side garlic, okay? So if you have a smaller one, then put two of them, etc. Be sure that doesn't have any brownie thing in the garlic. If it does, remove it. Everything you put in your soup or in anything you cook, you want it to be perfect. Because then when you put it in your mouth, you want to see those things perfect. So try to, <laughs> to pay attention to those things. Uh, potatoes also, when you peel potatoes, be sure there is no ice on the potatoes. Uh, clean them well. Garlic, I also rinse the garlic after I peel them. Uh, the same thing, obviously, the onion. But anyway, here we have, that is uh, running very nicely. And probably is, uh, I already saute four garlic prior with the onion. 
so I added this one. So now this is bubbling nicely. So I'm going to start adding my tomatoes. And I'm going to add a bay leaf. And I like the bay leaf to raise it all with. So I put the bay leaf in there. And, and I'm going, right now I'm working on, I have an electric stop. So I'm working on a number eight. But then as soon as, because I'm introducing now cold, the tomatoes are cold. So I want this to start happening faster, uh, the bubbling. So I want to, when I see that everything is really bubbling, I'm going to reduce to a simmer. And I'm going to let it cook to reduce the water. In the meantime, I'm going to add the, where's my baby? Oh, the baby is already there. <laughs> so then I have all my ingredients. It's very important to have your mise en place. This is what is called the mise en place, which means all the prep, everything that you're going to be using should be in front of you. So you are not running around and losing the timing here and, and forgetting that you don't have one thing. So you have everything here and it's the cooking is very fast and very efficient. So here I'm going now to give it a little bit more time to this, uh, to really uh, reduce the liquids from the tomato. But remember, I put the, only the bay leaf before because the bay leaf takes a little bit of time to bring all the flavors out. And this soup doesn't take too long because it's a fish soup and fish doesn't take too long to cook. And once all these uh, uh, vegetables are sauteed, they are totally so well cooked that they don't need the soup to extend their time. So let's start now pay attention to that, that they were cooking in between. And while we are doing this, that this is cooking, we're going to start with the tart. Uh, remember that we had the zucchini tart. So the zucchini tart, um, we have the crust that, uh, you focus on this? So the crust <laughs> is uh, frozen and it comes two crust in the, yeah, let's just a little bit. So the crust is, uh, comes two crust in the package. So just take one crust and immediately um, and mold the frozen crust into the parchment paper. So I did that already and I started to uh, prepare the crust so we don't lose too much time and we have time for everything. But I, I wanted to show you how the crust works. So you remember how the crust is and it's like that, right? So once it starts defrosting, the crust has the tendency to, to bring it back. <clears throat> the, the size is down a little, but they are not completely down like you see here. So what I do, I, I wet a little bit my hands, but very little, very, and if you think it's too much, take a cloth and then dry a little bit. And then with your hands, they start pushing the side down. Uh, obviously they're going to start breaking. So don't worry about the breaking because your hands are going to fix them. So look at here, it doesn't look that pretty right now, but it will. So I left it like that because I wanted you to see how we're going to do it here. I start cracking here a lot. So then I take a, a little bit of water and I put a cloth next to me in case I overdo the water in my hand. And then I just pat the side that I wanted you to see. Look at, look at this. <clears throat> this is from the crust. So I want to wet this part a little or wet here. And then I bring the crust and then with my fingers, I push down, I push down to fix and have all together the crust. Can you see? So what, here, what, brand, what brand of crust did you use? So I use a kosher, there is a or, 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 or something or like that. Yeah, that's the one I like the most. Oh, that's yeah, that... I most but I also Signature Star Market has uh, one that is uh, their brand Signature that is kosher and parve. So you can use also that one. And this deep, 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 deep crust pizza, oh, deep crust, uh, deep crust. And so here again, you, you see the calm down. So you just take a little bit of water, put it like that. And then with your fingers, So this is the only tricky part of the tart. So in the meantime, I'm going to put the oven at uh, 375. 
And um, I just want to be sure that I don't have any, any holes because otherwise the mix of the mayo and mustard that I'm going to put over is going to go through the paper and I don't want that to happen. So you try to put this together. And again, if you see that something is coming, it's, it's the, the dough had the tendency to be dry once it started. So what I do is I cover it with a plastic or if you are not ready to continue, I cover with a plastic or with a cloth. And again, if you put a tiny bit of water in your fingers and mix it and do like that, you're going to fix everything you want, okay? So don't worry because at the beginning it's going to be a mess. Everything is going to start properly, but it's, immediately you start with the fingers and the water and start putting all in and it will, it will work. Let me just go back to our tomatoes and just to steer this well. Any question about the crust, guys? Any question? Perfect. So, um, so this is still, I need a bit more time. I like to cook it a little longer. So you see the tomatoes, I like the tomatoes, if they are too big, cut them a tiny bit with your spatula. The pieces. There are some in the supermarket cans of tomato that are called petit dice. And the petit dice are better because they are smaller pieces. But this, I get it from Costco and you know, it's easier having it in the house. So, but, um, so you see now, this is how the, the color of the oil is becoming reddish and I didn't put any spices yet. So this is just from the tomato. So now I'm smelling here all the delicious uh, combination of tomato, garlic and, and onion. And now I think I'm going to start getting ready to put my spices. So the oven is start getting ready. I think, uh, just, let's, let's give it another three or more minutes here. And let's come here again. So we have um, already mixed a third of a cup of mayo with one tablespoon of uh, Dijon mustard. And if you don't have Dijon, get any strong mustard that you have, any good mustard, okay? No honey mustard, please. Unless I do love the honey flavor, so then yes. So I'm just going to spread this over. And we have the zucchini. We already cut the, the zucchini slices. Uh, we're going to overlap. And don't worry because the crust, even if it's, you see like that, you see that comes off, put it back again. Once it cooks, it will stay. And we'll put a little bit more of, uh, of water to fix it. So the water is going to be the blue. And if you like, even better, make your own pastry dough. Very easy. You just take in the food processor, one cup of flour, actually a cup and a quarter of flour for this, for an eight inch, uh, mold and then uh, um, put like a one a stick and um, I like one stick and one and half a tablespoon of uh, margarine or butter. I use earth balance. Earth balance uh, I enjoy very much because it has like a kind of buttery flavor but it's a uh, parvet and it's a uh, uh, wonderful to cook with. I do a lot of dessert that way and it really feels uh, fine. Let's go back to the tomato, guys. So I just want to stir the tomato so it doesn't get stick. It's starting to fast. And I'm going to let it cook a little bit longer. Well, we continue with the tart. So. Uh. One thing, always remember to have the handle in, never out, because if someone passes by, it's going to do a damage there. 
So always remember to have the stick layer. Yes. <laughs> I hope my Spanish is okay for you guys. I've been here for 38 years, Luis. I look at my accent. <laughs> so anyway, here we have the zucchinis. The zucchini has been thinly cut, you see? And you know, ones are going to be thinner than the other, but it doesn't matter. And we're going to uh, place them in a bowl. And we're going to sprinkle in here olive oil. And the thyme. We have the thyme here, no? Ah, perfect. We have the thyme here. And how much of olive oil? Okay. What sprinkle. Do? So just a sprinkle of olive oil. We don't want it just with the olive oil to be sure that everything is coated. And then we're going to pass the thyme. So the thyme, I like to, because it's dry thyme, so I like to squeeze it with my hands because that way you bring a little bit more flavor onto it. So I'm going to do that. Honey, come here. So here I have a quarter of teaspoon. Up. Of a quarter of teaspoon of thyme. Uh, I put in the recipe a quarter of teaspoon to, uh, to one third of teaspoon. So it's up to you how much thyme you like, but, uh, I would say that a quarter of the spoon will do. And your best tool is your hand. So I'm going to be using my left hand. <laughs> <laughs> and be sure that everything is well coated with the thyme and the onion and the oil and the salt. Don't put it all, I'll put more than. And you want to do this at the last minute because if you do the this earlier, you can do the zucchini. You can cut the zucchini like one or two days before, but don't put anything on the zucchinis because otherwise the zucchinis releases the water, and then you have a very watery zucchini in your bowl. So salt and pepper should be added at the time at the last minute. But the zucchini can be cut much earlier. So is the pie. The pie crust can be done much earlier, and you know, like one day or two days ahead and have it covered in the refrigerator until we are ready to assemble. So now here we are ready to assemble these guys, I think they are fine. And we're going to start placing. And you want to be sure when you overlap them that they go totally to the border and be sure that they are, you see like, a, don't leave too much in between. Otherwise, you're not going to have enough taste of zucchini in your tart, okay? So we're going to be continue doing that. I'm going to go back to the tomatoes. So this is taking the tomatoes. So now I'm ready here to start adding my spices. Let me just drink my hand. And you know what, guys? I have here a nickel. Very important <laughs> to wear a nickel. So now the tomatoes, I reduce it from the eight number in my stop to number three. And Okay, so now I'm going to add my uh, turmeric. And the turmeric is half a teaspoon. Turmeric is a wonderful spice. It's really very, very healthy. And when you, when you put them, don't put them all at once, just put a sprinkle a little, even though that you're going to stir it. And then I'm going to add my uh, saffron. So saffron is like, a, we say like a, between one eighth to one eighth to a quarter of a teaspoon of saffron. 
Okay. So I'm going to type straight to the saffron. And saffron, believe it or not, is a wonderful spice that is, you know, it's a petal from the flower, the saffron. And it's obviously very well known in Spain and other um, Mediterranean countries, they have a lot of saffron. But in Spain, it's a very common to cook with saffron. The paella is a typical, and actually the paella, this is the sofrito that you make on the paella. This is the base for the paella, guys. So as you can see, our cooking goes back to the, <laughs> to the same basic, but then we add and we change flavors and we put things uh, to make it a little bit more sophisticated. So uh, now we're going to uh, try have the fish that I used uh, this time I found a very nice haddock, but you can use uh, cod, you can use haddock, or you can use any white fish, but I would say for us, uh, kosher, uh, haddock and, and white fish, I mean, haddock or cod would be the best, uh, or scroll in the summer, but scroll is the same like, like haddock and, and cod, so. Uh, hake also is a very nice fish to use in the summer. It's also a kosher fish. So now we're going to put salt and we're going to put some pepper. And I like to use uh, the pepper from the, to grind my own pepper directly because it's fresher and flavors are very nice. And again, the same thing that the zucchini, I do this at the last minute because otherwise if you put the salt and the pepper, especially the salt, will make the fish bring their juices out. And it's a pity because you want everything into your soup and it dries also the fish. So that way it would be better this way. So now my sofrito is uh, really ready. I'm going to start adding the water. And again, it's nice to give it a, like at least a minute to do the spices. We had in there um, the saffron and the turmeric. So they bring a little bit of the flavors with the veggie. And I'm going to heat it up a tiny bit in the microwave because I'm going to add, and this is optional, the adding of the consomme. Um, I like to use the one that says no MSG, 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 <laughs> because it's healthier. It's hard to find, but the butchery sometimes carry, and when they carry, I buy more than one container. So, uh, but that again, it says chicken flavor, but don't worry, it has nothing to do with chicken. So they will not give you any chicken flavor in your soup. But this is totally optional. You can just omit completely and just go straight with the water. Or if you are lucky and you have a uh, fish stock, that good fish stock will give you even so much flavor. But this fish is going to release their own flavors within the Esther? soup. Esther, can, yes. Esther, can I can I ask a question? Yeah. How can it say chicken flavor and not have anything to do with chicken? Because it's vegetable. Did you, did you, did you read the ingredients? Did you read it? It's part of it. First of all, it's part of it. So being part of it, it doesn't have any meat. Uh, second of all, they it's like an enhanced to food uh, to give a little bit more. Um, uh, flavors into it. It has salt, it has onion powder, it has uh, go to the ingredients and then you will see how many stuff in there has, which actually the least you want is to eat that many stuff. So sometimes it's even better to, just, to forget about it and not to use it. So it's up to you. Okay. The soup is okay. going to be the same. It's going to stay. Straight. Okay. In fact, I will not use it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, I put it in the recipe because uh, sometimes it depends on the fish and how you buy. The fish that we buy, remember, it's a fish that has been sitting in there. It's not coming straight from the ocean, like in Spain, for instance. Uh, the fish has been handled by one side to another. It's been in uh, refrigerations, it's been in freezers, it's been in... And then by the time it comes to our house, that fish has a process of uh, longevity. And uh, the flavors are not exactly as, as strong, but still they are good. So I'm just going to add here my water before I burn my... And, uh, so yeah, so again, that is uh, up to us if you want to add uh, the consomme or not. So I, in this particular case, I feel that the fish is uh, very fresh, very important. I smell the fish when you get it. 
because the fish smell not very nice. And I always ask the, the person that is giving me the fish when, when this fish was brought to you. And, you know, I ask some questions, you know, very nicely and uh, uh, in a way that I'm going to increase here the stuff just to bring this to a boil. So here I have two cups of water. I'm going to put a total of five cups of water. So I'm going to add. Guys, interrupt me anytime, okay? And if you have any other questions uh, or any uh, challenge that you have in the kitchen that maybe I'm able to help you with, uh, please let me know. Um, as you know, I taught uh, culinary uh, for a few years, for 13 <laughs> years almost. <laughs> and uh, anyway, um, but that's part of it. Uh, I'm not going to continue with the tart, but if you want, let's go. Let's go to the tart and finish. So let me just finish my hand because I've been touching there. So I want that water to, to warm it up so it goes faster in the soup. But you don't need to warm up the soup, the water. You don't need to. So here I have four, and I'm going to move one more. Okay, so let's go back to the start. So I'm going to wait till this start boiling. And when it starts boiling, I'm going to put the pasta and I'm going to put uh, the fish. I, I reduce the heat to simmer. So the fish is not in a very high potential when they, it's cooking. So it cooks in a very low, uh, but it's still bubbling uh, soup. Okay, so let's go back. So here we have everything. Uh, the only thing I can put is salt in the soup. So let's put the salt now. And the salt, again, we're going to be testing the soup. So I start with a little bit less of what you think. Especially if you're going to introduce any consomme. So put much less salt because the consomme has some salt in it already. Okay, it's going to give us stir. I always keep, I have the, <laughs> the custom to keep my pot, my uh, spatula next to me in there so I don't forget about it. I'm going to continue with the tour. So you see how much I'm going to start overlapping the zucchini. The oven is on. It's a question that I have this. Anybody has any question for anything? People are on mute, so no. Oh, if, if people are on mute. Why don't you cook it in a pie pan of some sort? What does that mean, pie pan? Is that yeah. mm -hmm. Excellent camera work. Oh. So I forgot to tell you guys, look at here. You are maybe this answer your question. Let me just reduce my heat on my soup. Okay. And now this is uh, bubbling now. So I'm going to start adding my pasta. Here I have half a, half a cup of pasta. Now look at the pasta. This, I bring it from Spain, but it's, it's exactly like uh, if you take angel hair. Actually, you know, some supermarket do carry this type of pasta for the soup. If you ask for soup pasta, you will see that they will have this uh, uh, very thin uh, and this size uh, pasta for soups. Uh, but if not, you can get just the regular angel hair pasta and then uh, cut them, cut them with by hand or cut them with the scissors, whatever, until you get, uh, it's half a cup that you need, so you don't need that much. It will take you quick to do. So now they are going to wait a tiny bit and I'm going to add the fish. So you saw that the soup is really easy to make. Any question? So 
how is everybody doing with the with this situation that we're going through everybody's having uh enjoying with all the zoom that we have oh. mm -hmm. sure no barbara this is so great because this kind of classes are wonderful for for all of us hopefully i'm, I'm introducing you guys uh in, uh different that you can uh bring to your family and i hopefully they will enjoy yeah it, it, it's actually it's actually a very nice sort of a easier way to to be able to sort of demonstrate from from your own kitchens um you, you know without having to physically host people in your homes but you're you're letting them into sort of a a window through through technology and also you know, allows people just that that sort of flexibility to 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 come in or or drop off, um, at, you know, at at their convenience without any disruption. Exactly. Um, so, I I really appreciate you you doing this, um, Esther. I think I think the the biggest challenge is having somebody who can hold the camera while you are um, demonstrating, and and I. Thank your husband for for being um, uh, available to to lend a hand today. Well, I get to sample the, you know, the just dessert, so it's worth it. <laughs> right. So this is Actually, this is recorded, Barbara. Where where is? Can you then see it on the temple's website? I think so. Yes, and um, and Caitlin can um, let us know in the chat how we can access the. Um, the recorded message. Great. Are these recipes also in the Sisterhood cookbook that you edited? No, no, but you do have in the Sister Cookbook, in the Sisterhood cookbook, you have the my uh, Mediterranean fish uh, that is uh, that is uh, pretty, pretty much the same uh, sofrito, which is the same base as this one. So now here in the center, you can make like a little flower kind or something because it looks prettier. So you can just fold the little ones, the smallest one, and do like this, insert it like that. And be sure to remove the liquid because you don't want to suck it, your, your, uh, your cookie crust, okay? What was the other brand of pie crust that you said besides Oranoke? Uh, the signature, the one from the brand name from uh, from a Star Market. Oh, signature brand. That okay. they they have it uh, in the frosted section, and they are carved uh, with the OU. Uh, so very good. Is that also round, or is it something we have to roll out? No, they're round. <coughs> they're round. I don't know if they roll out. If they roll out, if you find a roll out that is too uh, then use a one because it's much easier. You don't have to deal with this. So here we have the pie. Beautiful. Uh, one thing that you want to do is uh, take a knife. And you see what you see, the mustard? You don't want to see any mustard. So you want to cover, bring with your knife, help with your knife to cover that side. So you want to see it all completely well covered. So here we have the crust. And again, let's continue with this funny part. So wait again, you go. Uh, and that's it. This is done. Now, what I've done here is, uh, Luis, can you photo here? Let me just stir one take of the soup and let me put the fish in because it's ready to go. So the fish, I already sprinkled salt and pepper on the fish. So I'm just going to place the fish in here. <clears throat> and the, they said, you, look at the pieces. So it's like a one, or one and a half inch pieces of fish. So they are bite size.
And it's much better to use white fish than any other fish. Okay, and be sure to put the, the juices that the fish brought into your plate when sitting by sitting there. Okay. So. The other question. Can you put the other question? Let me just do one. So I just want to show you. Uh, I forgot to put the time in the soup, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so what is this one? I'm going to increase the. The time in the fish soup really gives a beautiful taste. Beautiful, beautiful taste. It goes very nicely. Um, Esther, what temperature you bake the zucchini tart? 375. So I put the oven at 375 and I introduce in the oven. That's why you don't see the crust, Joanne, that you were asking me. Uh, you don't see in the crust the, the cookie sheet. And it's because the cookie sheet is inside of the oven, and I'm going to show you. So, um, so what I do is, uh, can you read the few? So I put the cookie sheet inside of the oven before, so the cookie sheet is really very hot. So I put the cookie sheet, and then I set up the oven. So that way, as as the oven is is getting to the temperature, the cookie sheet is is already hot. So then here I see that the temperature is already 75. So I'm going to take my Look at this. I'm going to open the oven. Can you see? Yeah. Every time you open the oven, by the way, you reduce the heat for 25, for one second, 25 degree out of your oven. So you have to be very careful of how long you're going to leave the oven off, off in the oven. So in this case, I just want to bring the, I'm going to bring the shell out and I'm going to, Take with my hand the pipe. You see, it doesn't break. And bring it here. So when I introduce that in there, the cookie sheet is really very hot. Okay. So I made another one already. So I'm going to put it here just to warm it up so we can have it. And because that way. It will take you approximately, um, I would say, 30 to 40 minutes for the pie to be ready. And the way to know is that I'm just going to put the leaf and I'm going to reduce now to three. To, uh, so the way that you want to be sure is that the crust is uh, golden and it's uh, well done. Crispy and the zucchini pinch it with a knife. I mean, you see the zucchini is tender and what, well, that then is very well, okay. But I, I would say that definitely half an hour would take. I put in the recipe 25 to 30 minutes, but I think it's more like a half an hour or 35 minutes even. So um, that's it. Uh, pretty easy, no? <laughs> so the soup is very divine. Uh, I'm sure it would take maybe like 10, 15 minutes for the soup to be ready. I reduced already the heat uh, in the soup uh, to three. Uh, so you were in a simmery, but when it says simmery, be sure that it's bubbling. So you always want to see alive everything because otherwise it's not cooking well and it will take you much, much longer. Okay, so let it let it be that is uh, that time period and, and that's it and then you're ready to serve it. I'm going to add the parsley. In this instance, I have you can use parsley or cilantro. So we already uh, minced the, here I have cilantro. The cilantro, so that's, that's very well with fish. So you can use either or, parsley or cilantro, and it gives very nice taste. And that's it. And you can serve it together because that would be a wonderful meal, a very elegant mm -hmm. meal. You have the soup, the soup is not divine. <laughs> you have the soup, you know, because the fish now is releasing all the flavors and it's bringing to the soup that flavor. So indeed, you don't need the consomme, so you can pass with the consomme if you want. So anyway, also the fish should be fresh, as you know, I don't have to tell you that. 
And uh, ideally, if you have it frozen, it's okay, but don't let it frozen for very long. And if you defrost it in the refrigerator, it's even better. And it will take you more than overnight if you want to do it early in the morning. Uh, if not, just put it over the counter if you're in a rush. Or if you're in a super rush, what I sometimes I do, just uh, put it in a bowl with cold water, um, the fish inside of their own bag, and put it in a, in a cold water a bath and let it there for every so long, change the water because the water becomes even colder, but change that water and put again cold water, never hot water and cold water. And then we, you will see with that in, in, in 10 minutes, the fish is defrosted. So it will do very quickly. And um, I think that's it. Um, I'm trying to think what all the tips I can give you. Um, so I made uh, another pie. The crust in this pie, idea is if you bake it the day that you're going to eat it. But I made it last night, the other one, because I said to Louis, oh, maybe I should make another one. So that way we don't have to wait a half an hour for the guy to be baked. And we can uh, show you the one that I already made. So um, um, that's it, uh, you know, so. Esther, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at, Esther, can you show us the completed pie? Yes, I'm going to show you the complete yeah. pie. I am going to show you the complete soup because the soup is going to take, if you guys were with me, another five minutes. Uh, the, the one that I made already, the pie that I already made, it should be already hot. And we can uh, enjoy, well, Luis and I, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can see how it looks. But pairing the soup with the pie, really a very nice hurry meal and it looks very elegant and I look at how long it took us to do, to do okay so um, hopefully you guys will enjoy uh, the pie also another thing that you can do with that crust you don't need to because the, the crust is completely and as can, you can be used for it can be used for either uh, savory or sweet so you can also do a dessert out of that pie um, the same method of letting down the tart and putting it all together and then cut on um, apples very thinly, not transparent, but thin enough so that way cook it faster and then overlap them well so you, you taste the apple. And before I put over the crust, I put a little bit of marmalade. If you have like apricot marmalade, it does very well. Just a little, a little cover to cover the whole crust. And then I put my apples all overlapping, making a nice form. And then I sprinkle a little bit of sugar and put it in my in the oven, 375 degrees. It will take you probably like the same amount of time as the zucchini tart. And you can do that with peaches. You can do that with anything. So um, hopefully that give you an idea. So let me get the crust, the one that we already made, the pie. And So you see that the crust is crunchy. So you touch it and you see that it's hard and crunchy. And the, uh, you see that uh, <coughs> we are well cooked through. And anyway, you can do it the, night, the day before also, two days before, and then heat it up again in your, in your oven. Always put a 375 in to heat it up because that way it will take lesser time and it will not uh, burn more your crust. Okay, so that's, that's it. Beautiful. Pass it onto a plate. Uh, I suppose that's too delicate to freeze. Get to freeze. Huh? To freeze. Oh, to freeze? What happened with it? Can you keep it? Oh, you know what? I never done it because we eat it immediately, <clears throat> but I think I think definitely you can. You know, I'm a freezer person, so I do believe in freezing if you freeze correctly. And the way to freeze it, Annette, is uh, one is completely cool, completely cold, because if it's still a little bit warm, put it in the refrigerator you are in a hurry because it needs to be completely cold. And then take a parchment paper 
cover completely the, the parchment paper and do like that or a plastic or a plastic wrap and cover all up like that that you don't get there is no gaps in between i mean there is no holes in between so you you are sure that it's all packed in it. and that way the air that is in between it will not freeze and if you have it completely flat uh but against the zucchini uh the freezing point will not arrive to the zucchini and you will have a much better uh finish afterwards so then yes you can freeze it be sure to again do the same process when if you're going to freeze it take it out of here put it in a platter and then be sure to uh keep the pan it's very important to keep the pan because the pan what it does is that make the crust all over crusty the crust and make it very very uh crispy crispier and it doesn't get because the zucchini releases a little bit of juices uh, after you put the salt and the pepper so it, you don't want a saggy dough in there because otherwise it's not going to be tasty and, and nice so the importance of the crust to be very hot in the moment that you put it in, uh, that the pan has to be very hot in the moment that you put the the pie, even if it's uh, already defrosted, also do the same technique of this being cut in the, in the oven. Is that okay? So, first we are just going to elevate this, and I'm going to try to pass this in seal without breaking. Oh. Oh. Ah. Pull, pull the paper, and the crust is there. Amazing. Okay, no, the only thing is very easy, just pull carefully, obviously, you know, but you do just like that. Just pull carefully like that and the pie comes out. So that's it. So now here we have, it's a nice, uh, you know, kind of a nice presentation. If you want to make your own crust, I told you, very easy, uh, one cup and a quarter of flour. I like to shift the flour and then I add, I put it in the cuisine art and then I add uh, one stick, um, less than one tablespoon of uh, earth balance and then I add a tiny bit of salt if it's for a savory one if it's a sweet one I put a little bit of sugar and then uh, I put a lot of time until I see that the butter is getting that the uh, earth balance is getting into my flour and you see like crumbs in there but it still is uh, very dry. So then I take very cold water from the refrigerator from, uh, from here, very cold. And I take, in the winter time, it will take you for that amount, two tablespoons of water, very cold water. And add a two tablespoons of water and I start rinsing, pulsing, pulsing, pulsing. You don't wanna do the, the, the engine work constantly because you don't wanna create a ball. You want that the, um, that the dough is quite, uh, how do you call it, like uh, little balls, little balls all around. So it's not yet combined completely. So then stop and then take take a, a plastic or wrap or, or the counter or take a wax paper, a wax paper and uh, put the dough in there. And then with your hands, start, you don't want to touch the dough because if you touch the dough, the dough likes to be cold. So your hands are hot. So you're going to create a heat inside of your dough. So you don't want to touch your dough. So what you want is with the same paper, you close everything in the dough, put it in until you see that all combines and you get like a ball. Then just put it in and then you're ready to open it up and then take another piece of uh, wax paper, put it over, take your roller and roll it. To roll it, don't do like this. Go center up center down center right center left and work until you come you make your, your round have your pie that you're going to use next to you be sure that you're going to have at least uh, that much which is like uh, an inch and a half all around of the diameter of your pie because that's going to be for you to turn it over to make the, the crust around and the borders so that's it. And then remove the over uh, paper with your hands, place it down, or you can put the tie down over the dog and then do like that. And the dog goes on top of your, or your pie. 
And then with the same paper that is on top, again, you are not touching the dog with your fingers because they have a paper there. That is the one that you flip it over. So uh, make it, you know, to be sure that it's all around and everything, and then take the paper out and then fold the addition that we have that is uh, folding over the pipe, over your, over your mold, put it over and then press down, press, 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 press until you get all the border very nice and thicky, thick, thicker than the bottom. So that way when you pull it up, um, then, uh, you know, the, the crust is much nicer. I use uh, these guys, uh, which, uh, you know, you can, you can pull this up, it's very easy after you bake it. So you have all this in here and then just, uh, you know, I think that everybody knows how to do this. So I hope that that gives you, a, yeah, and that's and also because the, the sides are not very, very tall. So you can do also that um, zucchini tart in there, okay? So the soup is ready, the zucchini tart is ready, and I think I'm going to start placing. So sorry that I cannot give you a taste, but, um, Hopefully you have a sense. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. Esther, can I ask a question? Uh, please. When you were talking about making it a sweet pie, you said the pie crust, marmalade, and what kind of apples, and what was the other thing on top? The apple that I use are either golden, golden apple, or I use uh, the green smith, ready smith. Uh, do not use uh, Macintosh because Macintosh is more for a pie, for an apple pie. They, uh, as you know, is very good for apple sauce and they, they disintegrate. Form, they disintegrate. They bring, you know, their form is not together. So yeah. you want an apple that are going to be, and you don't want a very crispy apple. You want an apple that has a little bit of tart in it. Uh, you don't want it very sweet. So I would say that the, the golden, all the, especially the, the green uh, apple smith, those are really good, granny smith, those are great. Uh, so yeah, so peel them and core them and then cut them in, uh, remove obviously the, the seeds and then cut them in, in, the, in the slices. You don't want a very thick slice because it would take much longer in your oven. And yeah. the crust, remember it's thin, so it will cook faster the crust than the, than the apple. So you want to have them thin enough, but not too, too transparent and uh, overlap them, overlap them a lot. So that way you feel the apples, okay? Yeah. And apple, it may not look when you bring them out that are completely cooked, but if you pinch one apple, you will see if it goes through the knife, it's perfect. And then what I do after, I take a, a little bit of the same uh, apricot jam, and I dilute it a tiny bit of water. I put it in the microwave just to dissolve a little. And then with a brush, I brush the apple over and it gives a very nice glaze. Also, I brush the, the side of the, of the crust with the same, with the same uh, brush, okay? Yeah. And it's yeah. very shiny and very uh, appetizing tart. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so the soup is ready. I'm just going to put it off. Uh, how, how many people would that serve? Uh, this soup, it would serve basically, uh, I would say, remember, we put only five cups of water. So if you want, because this is, look at how, how uh, uh, dense is the soup. So this is really like a, a meal of, of its own. So I would say that here probably will fit like four people, definitely. Okay. So it depends if you want to have more people in there. So then add more fish and add more water and add more onions and add more of everything. But this amount that I gave you is for four people very nicely. Okay. So this, oops, it smells really good. <laughs> and I'm going to taste because it's very important before you serve to taste everything. So I'm just going to taste to be sure that this amount of salt that we put in there is fine. Oh, well, that is salt and pepper. <laughs> you see? So I'm going to add, and I'm, you know, I work much better if I see my salt in my hand. I'm 
paper. It's very important to taste. Actually, it's important to taste as you cook. So as you can see that the pasta is all done. You see the steamed pasta and the fish doesn't take too long to cook. This soup is better the following day than the day that you cook. But also the day that you cook is delicious, <laughs> but the following day is even better because the flavor sort of like uh, sit there longer and it's bring you all, all, much more taste even. So let me just take Esther. Um, I, I have to jump off. It's uh, one o'clock. Um, thank you so much for your time. I will share the photos. I have another commitment now, but I will share the photos uh, this afternoon. And I really appreciate you uh, uh, making such beautiful dishes. And um, just as a reminder, the, the, the link, this, this um, episode was recorded, so this should be available. Uh, on the on the website and um, thank you again everybody and thank you Bob for setting it up thank you very much thank you 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 Esther is the crust recipe in the cookbook no, the cat recipe is not in the cookbook, but I, I gave it to you again. It's uh, one and a half. I, I, I didn't get how much sugar there was. On the crust, it, if you're going to do a, a, a sweet crust for a sweet for a dessert, so then put like, a, I would say one tablespoon of sugar. No, what? actually, less, 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 less than one tablespoon. Put like a two teaspoon of sugar, two teaspoon of sugar, it will do plenty. You just know this off the top of your head. Yeah, I, I do a lot. In fact, I have it in my freezer. <laughs> Already, <laughs> I do it. I'm cooked, and I, I put I put the plastic around, you know, in the same shell. So then, uh, then it's ready to go in the oven. And I don't even need to defrost it. Sometimes I defrost it because I'm preparing the fruit or whatever I'm going to put over. And so, uh, yeah. So I always have those things that. Because when I dirty my cuisine art, I start doing more things in the cuisine art. So, <laughs> so I said, oh, I'm making one. Let's, let's do two or three. Because <laughs> so then I keep it in the freezer. And, uh, and it's very easy then to, to make whatever they said you want to do at, at any time. So yeah, and then um, any other question, Annette? No, thank you so much. This was thank awesome. Thank you. This was yeah, great. Okay. Thank you, thank you. OK. Thank well, you okay. so much. Bye. Yeah, I'll see you guys in another occasion. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Caitlin. Okay. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, Esther. Bye. Thank you, Barbara. We'll, that... be, we'll be right over. <laughs> <laughs> I was <just> going <laughs> to do that. <laughs> well, it cuts the pie. Yeah. Oh. We like to taste it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Enjoy. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Enjoy, enjoy. Okay. Bye. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, How's the baby? <laughs> <laughs>